Well, from dress-up cowboys to just plain rookies, watch Meredith's video diary in a day-to-day -day account of what life is like driving the herd. We'll have that tomorrow on News 4 at 6. From photojournalist to wrangler, News 4's Meredith Richardson rode along with the Frontier Pack Train of June Lake, California on a four-day adventure right through the heart of the Sierra. I arrived at the Frontier Pack Station in June Lake, California to find 50 some odd strangers dressed in cowboy getup. Some experts and some just like me, rookies. We settled at our camp nine miles south of Bishop, had a briefing with Cowboy Dave, then were assigned to our horses and fitted in our stirrups. I would be riding red. It was to bed early that night. We had a long day ahead of us. They weren't kidding when they said you'd be up at 5 a.m but at least we got a good breakfast in before the ride. And hash. We're halfway through our second day. We woke up this morning, had a nice cowboy breakfast. We took off, they closed down the highway for us, 395, so we could cross. We got up into this area that you see here and we've been at it for about four hours. The second leg of the journey is taking place right now. And all I can say is that I'm sore. <laughs> it's not so much my behind, but it's my, my knees. Others couldn't have agreed with me more. My knees are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> then there were those that knew the ropes. It's a little long, dusty. You know, I'm trying to get used to the horse, but it's good. Day one's the toughest. Man, I hope she was right. I was sore. After dinner, I learned or attempted to learn how to rope. There you go. Little, yeah, that's good. Yeah. There it is. Keep rolling that wrist. Numerous tries later, and I finally managed to land one. Piece of cake. That was enough for me for day one. I was off to bed. Armed with four Advil and two moleskin bandages, I was ready to go for day two. It was a scenic three hours through the woods, a quick lunch break, and then another three hours down to our base camp for the night. But first, a quick trip to the Cold Springs. We're here a little bit above our, our base camp for the night in the Cold Springs. Everybody comes up here and takes uh, showers or just kind of bathes for a little bit. And then goes down or goes back down to camp for dinner. After dinner, it was a little cowboy poetry fireside. Then a recap of my travels thus far before bed. So far in the trip, we've had one person pass out due to fatigue um, and dehydration. And I had a mule bite through my saddlebag to get to one of my apples today. That was interesting. What else? That's all I can think of. So, see you tomorrow. Day three was probably the longest. The pain had subsided for the most part, and I managed to pick up a little buddy along the way. We stopped for a break just now, and I have a little friend next to me. This is my mule. Yeah, he's been following me the entire leg of the journey, so he's very cute. <laughs> Seven hours later, and we finally made it to camp, exhausted and ready to eat. I've never been happier to see a trailer in my entire life. Now we just got to clean up and get ready for dinner. Okay, we're outside. It's about 9.30 right now. It's the last night. There's a bunch of us. We set out a tarp and we're sleeping underneath the stars. So it should be interesting. I'll see y'all feel in the morning. The next morning, I was up early with the cowboys as they took care of any last minute things that needed fixing and saddled up the herd for our last day. We came out of the woods, across the 395 highway, and into the June Lake area, all the while stopping traffic as we made our way to the pack station. I may have been dirty and exhausted, sore and unable to walk, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. It was the side conversations on trails, views you won't ever see from the inside of a car, and the beauty of something so simple that made me appreciate the cowboy way. All right, Meredith, the first question people might have is, how do these guys make a living when they're out on the range so much like this? Well, cowboys have been herding these lands for hundreds of years, yeah. so it's no different with the Frontier Pack Train. The only problem that they're incurring right now is they have to go through a bunch of government regulations, I guess, obtaining permits from the BLM, the Forest Service, and the Department of Water and Power. So with that, Obtaining the permits is the hard part, but once they get to summer and can run the horse drives, do outfitting tr uh, trips and uh, pack trips where they take people into the back country yeah. on mules, they're good to go. That's how they make their money. Very good. And you enjoyed your involvement out there? 
Oh yeah, I, I had a great time. Uh, in no way could I have prepared myself for it though, mentally or physically. I, I was sore by the end of it, but it was awesome. It's tough. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, quite an experience, obviously, and this wraps up Meredith's Adventure of the Wild West. If you missed any of the stories, you can log on to MyNews4.com, where a link is set up for the horse drive.